All right, welcome back to Soccer Matters. As everybody knows, the Houston Dynamo in uh, playoff match number two. It'll occur on Monday in Sandy, Utah against Real Salt Lake. Dynamo with the key 2-1 to one win at home. And, of course, uh, a big part of that win, he joins us now. He's Griffin Dorsey. Griffin, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Glenn. All right, I, I saw a lot of headlines, a lot of adjectives around this game describing what type of win it was from the Dynamo. You give me your take on what type of win it was. Uh, win. <laughs> Simple enough. It was a win. It, we, we did enough, and I think you know we've taken the last couple of days to to digest to digest what that win looked like in ways we can improve, and and in in ways we we uh, we did really well. So when you guys break this game down, I mean, at this point of the year where your system is pretty defined. And, you know, you're talking about improving. There are areas that, I mean, you already are pretty knowledgeable about that you're being told you have to improve in, right? Oh, yeah. I think as a team, we, we, we have a, a couple areas. And then as a player myself, I also have a couple areas. So, it, so it's really more at this stage around execution in the playoffs? It's execution, but you're still learning. I mean, it's it's still soccer and it's still a game. And every opportunity you have to go out there on the field, there's always things to learn from. All right. Don't get mad at me, but can you give me one example? Yeah. Uh, I think the timing and the, the context in which I cross the ball sometimes is something that, that I can work on. There are times where, you know, I bomb forward and maybe the whole team's not with me. And it can be maybe patient, circulate, and then get the cross off instead of, you know, bombing down the field and trying to find Corey 1v4 in the box. Uh, that, would be a, that would be a specific example. So that, I'm assuming that's when you're not under pressure and you may be able to just hesitate another second or two for people to get there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All right. We're talking to Griffin Dorsey, Dynamo right back. Um, are you noticing teams adjusting to you? I have my thoughts on that. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I want to hear yours first because I want to okay. see if they're comparable. <laughs> uh, I would say yes, um, especially at the start of that game against the RSL. Um, they started in a back five, ended up switching to a back four. But, you know, I felt that, you know, Chang was the their left wing back. He, he, he stayed relatively tight uh, to me for at least the first 30, 35 minutes of that game. Um, and that was definitely a shift and something that I had seen seen previously. Total agreement. Um, that would have been my answer too. That that I do think teams are, if if I take an American football term, or game planning a bit for for you. I, I think even Tata Martino in the, in the, in the final had a lot of thought in what he was doing around uh, your width and the uh, piece that you bring to the Dynamo attack now. Um, is that a game you could have managed out a little bit better? I know Ben Olsen alluded to it because it was pretty – I mean, listen, the entertainment value was through the roof. Nobody's complaining about that in that playoff game and the win over RSL. But could you guys have managed that out a little bit better or is continuing to press your way of managing it out? No, I think as a team, we that's one thing we digested. I think, you know, RSL came out with a with a transition mindset, a defensive bunker and transition mindset, and that's how they scored their goal. And we knew that that's how that they they were going to want to score, and 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 we still allowed that to happen. So I think as a team, definitely could have managed that a little bit better. Houston Dynamo defender Griffin Dorsey. Again, uh, we will have right here on ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two point five, the local radio call of the game on Monday night. 7.30, the pregame show, um, and uh, we're looking forward to the call of that one and the Dynamo potentially closing shop in two games. Benefit to closing it in two games? I mean, what isn't the benefit? We want to go through, and um, if you can do it in two games, you can do it in three games, doesn't matter, and I think that closing it out early is exactly what we want to do. Yeah. Griffin, is it a bit of a strange sort of – you know, the spacing of the games and everything, does it throw off the rhythm of your training sessions or is it just something, I mean, obviously you have to adjust to it. Yeah, I think it's just, it's an adjustment. All season, you know, we've had you know, a lot of different additions to the year, uh, Leagues Cup being one of them and, and, and managing 
what you do with the the time period between games and this is this is really no different so that magical space that that area you know where the corner of the box where you know in and around that area that you love to get in on uh, with your left foot that seems to me to be an area where there's always a lot of hesitation um, from defenders. You might catch them in two minds for a second and that that's why that's a great place to get. And that's why we see, you know, inverted wingers and people bending in goals from, from that space in, in, in every league in the world, just kind of discuss that to me and your desire to get there and the importance of that. Yeah. I mean, I think that that space <clears throat> for any winger or outside back or wide player in general, it can be a very valuable space. And, you know, I would say that with someone as special as Coco inside of me, it makes it even more beneficial for me because he's dragging defenders. And even, you know, you look at the goal that we scored, um, the second goal against RSL, you know, he's not only dragging defenders, but he's playing unbelievable balls in behind and you know you can do that and so having those options is I think really what hesitates defenders so you know it's a testament to me but I, I would say it's also a huge testament to Coco and what he brings. So part of your job is also you know controlling the right side of the field a very big piece of real estate in in the game of soccer it's the wide area it's where a lot happens you have to go box to box I think people really appreciate you know, the uh, let me just use the word that everybody uses, engine that you have. Um, I think it's a V8 for sure. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, um, you know, when you looked at the start of that first game and it was Chang, did you, did you expect him to defend that deep? Because, you know, he is in some ways noted to be an attacker. And did you think you would have gotten a little bit more push from him to make you defend maybe? I think that it was pretty clear once the, the whistle blew for the start of the game that their game plan was to, was to defend. And so from, from then on, it, it seemed pretty obvious that that's what, that's what Chang and, you know, even Luna for, for parts of the game were, you know, deep, willing to defend um, and ready for transition. And that's really what it felt like. Yeah, it seemed almost like they were playing for, for penalties. <laughs> Um, the importance of Hector getting the first goal, obviously. I mean, that that changes things tactically. That's probably another big piece of going to Sandy, Utah in game two. Yeah, I mean, Hector Hector's the captain of this team. He's the engine of this team. And he produces in huge moments. And I think that was one of the huge moments we really, we really needed him. And he came through. And, you know, he, you see it time and time again throughout this year that that he's really been the guy that it's gone through. Listen, you're a thoughtful, cerebral guy. You're around him all the time. You know, give us, I mean, we see a lot in watching these games and focusing on him, but maybe give us even more from the standpoint of you being around him on a daily basis and training and, and, and maybe some of these gifts that maybe we don't even see. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just one of those things that when Hector's asked to perform, you never hesitate. It's not even a it's not even a question as to whether or not he will perform. You you know what you're going to get from him, right? As someone asks him to do something, and um, it's it's pretty special to to just watch and 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 be a part of it in a team sense. So, what does he say to you during a match, Griffin? I need you to get forward more. I mean, give me give me an example or two. Hector loves to scream. So a lot of it's just random Spanish in my face and he's pointing in different directions. <laughs> but a lot of the time I'll actually understand what he's saying. You know, uh, maybe it's he's on for the cutback on a cross or, you know, he wants ball to feet and not in behind or something like that. And, you know, he doesn't do it in a, in a communication sense of the like language use. It's more body language and, and loud noises. Yeah, and you can see that from afar, but isn't that exactly what the Dynamo needed out of a DP? Oh, for sure it is. And I think that's exactly what you need out of your captain. You want him to be loud. You want him to be passionate. You want him to care. And uh, he brings all that, and he brings it to every single guy on the field. 
Talking to Griffin Dorsey, Houston Dynamo defender. Now, what differs in game two for you? I mean, you know, there's reports that Chicho Arango is going to play, Justin Glad, you know, all that. We don't know that for sure. But but what what outside of that might differ in game two for you guys? I think we're still going to to RSL. Actually, I know we're still going to RSL to impose ourselves, and we want um, we want nothing nothing less than a win. Um, and that's really our mindset. Chicho plays, we'll be ready. If Chicho doesn't play, we'll be ready. If Justin Glad plays, we'll be ready. If he's not there, we'll be ready. And same same with Silva. I know that they've got a lot of numbers who, you know, are in and out. And, uh, and I think no matter what and no matter who plays, we'll, we'll be ready and prepared for, for that. I'm thinking the confidence right now is the best it's ever been. Yeah. I think that sometimes you don't want to be overly confident in these situations. And I think part of that is digesting the game that we just played and understanding that we can continue to do better as a team. And it's a win in the playoffs and that's special, but I think we have far more to give than, than, than what we did in game one. And Griffin, what we see on the outside, it seems like, you know, Ben Olson and the staff are doing a great job of keeping everybody grounded and focused on the task at hand, which I find very impressive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a, that's another testament to this week and, and the, and the approach going into game two and, and understanding that we did win a, a playoff game and that, that that's huge for, for, for not only this team, but also this club, but understanding that that was not our best game of soccer and we know it and we, we can do better. And, and, and that's something that the coaching staff really brings. So you, I mean, do you watch all the other MLS playoffs? Are you one of those guys that are watching a lot of other games, maybe doing a little little research, or are you strictly just zoned in on Dynamo RSL, and I, I don't want to be bothered by what else is going on? You know, I'm a very uh, – I'm a very focused on what we're doing, and and I try to, to, to tune out – the remainder of the MLS. Um, but with that being said, I'll tend to watch games if, if we're, if we're, um, if there's a possibility of lining up against another team and that, that maybe is where I get a little bit of my studying in, but I, I try to, I try to stay emotionally detached from the rest of the MLS and just, just focus on us. What we need All right. To do. So did you just admit you watched the sport in Kansas city, St. Louis game? <laughs> I see now that's the funny part I didn't watch that game but I swear that it, it, when we win our next game I'll probably go back and watch that game yeah. <laughs> yeah. good for you you got your routine ritual what's ritual mean to you I mean are there I think I probably asked you this three times before in the past but specific rituals outside of just the rest and the food I mean are there other things that that you do to to, to maintain your focus yeah I think sometimes it's a maintain focus and I think sometimes it's a step away focus. Um, you know, you can't, even in, when you're in the playoffs, you can't be, you can't be submerged in, in soccer 24 seven and you need to find ways to step away. So, uh, you know, I have schoolwork that, that helps me get away, helps my mind distract from, from what soccer is going on. And, and, and I can dive into, you know, maybe it's not the most entertaining thing, but, classwork and, and, and writing a paper or something like that is, is a great distraction. And over the last three years, I've also been big into meditation. So that's, that's another place where I'll go, but that's more of a focus oriented thing than, than, um, than maybe the classwork, which is maybe a bit more of a distraction. So I think there was a photo I saw you juggling in bare feet. Was there something meditative around that? Yeah. You know, before the game, I think you were out on the field. Yeah. I watched a documentary this year about grounding and I mean, whoever's listening to this can go look it up, but uh, it's essentially you, you, your body fills with, with positive charges and the earth is a, the earth, the ground connecting with the ground is a way of, of um, diffusing all of the positive charges in your body into the earth. And, you know, it's something athletes do all over the world. And uh, kind of something I've adopted a little bit this year. Some of the great runners were barefoot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now that I think of that, you saying that, that 
That is that is pretty interesting. Um, increased confidence on the road, and I probably should have asked you this uh, tagging off of uh, what differs in game two, but you just seem like a more confident, more prepared team on the road now. Yeah, I think that comes with you know the progression of the season and trusting each other and 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 trusting you know yourself and when you're on the road it's a lot about being together as a group because you maybe don't have the backing of the fans or, or the little things that maybe can push you through those moments and so a lot of it is 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 just a connection to the group as a whole and and not only as a group but you also have to connect with yourself in order to connect with the group so look, how much fun and how enjoyable is this? I mean, you're going to Sandy, Utah. You're going to be playing with a backdrop of mountains. It's a gorgeous place. Everybody's going to be against you. I mean, this is what it's all about, right? Yeah. I mean, you say that, it gives me the chills. I think, uh, you know, last game was my first playoff game, and it was it was a dream come true for me um, to play in the playoffs. It's always what I've wanted. Um, and this is another opportunity that that is super special for me. And I think you cherish all these moments and all these games where, you know, there's maybe a little bit more on the line and, and you're willing to go to go to war with a group that you love. And I think that's also what's special about this group. Well, Griffin, I got one more before I let you, you go. Now I looked at all of the differing, uh, and I thought there were some really good ones, Halloween costumes. But I think you blew it away with Shaggy of Scooby Doo. Yeah. And, and what's really scary is when I thought about that, I'm thinking, wait a second, Griffin Dorsey's a young guy. And then I'm like, well, wait a second, Scooby Doo is enduring. Scooby Doo was around when I was a little kid, which is pretty scary. <laughs> so they're like they're like the Rolling Stones of cartoons. I mean, they don't last that long. But here you are doing Shaggy from Scooby Doo. What's the connection? Oh, Scooby Doo is a childhood thing for me, for sure. I I can I can date it all the way back to some of the first memories I have is SpongeBob and Scooby Doo. So, um, but with that being said, I I attest the the outfit to my wife. My wife is really the one that uh, that put it all together. <laughs> well, at least you know you're giving your wife credit, which I think number one from a lot of reasons is a great move. But <laughs> but also if she came up with the costume. She deserves it, right? It's like the yeah. guy who doesn't get the credit for writing the song and music. Exactly. Um, that was influential. So that's that's awesome. Sounded like a lot of fun. Do you know who Scrappy Doo was? I know who Scrappy Doo is. Yeah, but okay. uh, yeah, that was never going to come out. <laughs> okay. Actually, Goose could probably our dog could probably be Scrappy Doo because it's so it was proud. Scrappy. Okay, so since you know Scrappy Doo, then I know you're the real deal. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't know Scrappy Doo, it would be a problem. <laughs> um, but listen, it was a great costume. Uh, more importantly, best of luck uh, on Monday against Real Salt Lake. Great interview. Thank you very much, uh, as always, for your time, Griffin. Continued success, and we appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you so much, Glenn. Uh, always a pleasure. All right. That's Griffin Dorsey. Fun stuff there. Great stuff there. Good insight. We'll take a break. Uh, Lamontbrands.com to get your Soccer Matters T-shirts and hats. Uh, they benefit the 501C charity, the Snowdrop Foundation. Also, uh, catch your games in the best pub atmosphere in Houston. It's Hugh O'Connor's Pub out on I-10, uh, Marquee Entertainment Center. That's the place to be. We'll take a break. More to come.